Hi everyone, welcome to Gnan Cloud Carriage. In this session, I am going to talk about Red Hat OpenShift Data Foundation in short form ODF. In our demo environment, we have Red Hat OpenShift latest version 4.13. It is running on vSphere platform. And now today I'm going to show you how we can deploy op OpenShift Data Foundation on OpenShift environment, okay? Now let's, before uh, jump into that demo, first understand what is OpenShift Data Foundation. If you see the right side diagram, as we are aware, OpenShift can be deployed on physical or virtual environment, or we can deploy on private cloud, public cloud, and edge location. In our demo environment, we, imp we implemented Red Hat OpenShift on VMware vSphere platform. And as we know, Kubernetes means it is a container orchestration platform, but OpenShift is a enterprise-grade Kubernetes platform. On top of OpenShift, to provide a persistent storage and persistent volume for our containers and virtual machines, serverless applications, we require a OpenShift Data Foundation ODF. So let's understand the definition as per the Red Hat documentation. Red Hat OpenShift Data Foundation in short form ODF, previously Red Hat OpenShift Container Storage in short form OCS. And recently now that they modified the name to ODF, is software defined storage for containers. Okay, and ODF helps teams to develop and deploy applications quickly and efficiently across clouds. Red Hat ODF is a cluster data management solution that provides higher level data services and persistent storage for Red Hat OpenShift and provides smart capabilities for handling object data and disaster recovery. And ODF have your two editions, essential and advanced edition, when it comes to the essential edition is included with Red Hat OpenShift platform plus in short form OPP at no additional cost. Okay, so OPP means that means OpenShift platform plus let me quickly recap our Red Hat open hybrid cloud platform licensing features. So here is the high level diagram of Red Hat open hybrid cloud platform. We have a three license editions OpenShift Kubernetes engine, OpenShift container platform, OpenShift platform plus. When it comes to the platform plus, as we know, Kubernetes engine have only the basic Kubernetes platform and we can run it on either use, utilize the Linux container host operating systems. It's supported for two ways. Either we can use RHEL OS or Red Hat Core OS. And then on top, we can install OpenShift container platform. In order to get the advanced features, we require a OpenShift platform plus license. Within the OpenShift platform plus, we have ACM feature. That means advanced cluster management. We have ACS, advanced cluster security for Kubernetes. We have image registry feature or global registry feature that is Red Hat Quay and the cluster data management feature, which is called Red Hat OpenShift Data Foundation ODF. Okay, so ODF is part of the OpenShift Platform Plus license with essential edition at no additional cost. If we planning to utilize ODF advanced features, we require a ODF advanced license. Okay, and it is a software defined storage solution. We can also call it as hyper converged infrastructure solution, HCA solution. And similar like in VMware, we talk about vSAN and Nutanix HCA, same like that, we have a Red Hat ODF solution. But only the new thing in this ODF feature is it's supported for file storage, block storage, and object storage. These three features are available with this ODF. Okay, and why is Red Hat ODF is included with OpenShift Platform Plus? The main thing is OpenShift Data Foundation Essential Edition is included. The main purpose is there is a one challenge, how to provide a consistent DevSecOps experience. So in order to provide a consistent DevSecOps experience only, Red Hat decided to include the ODF feature within the platform plus. So solution is a consistent experience regardless of the infrastructure platform to kickstart our road to the adopting a development security operations approach. 
okay now let's try to understand the openshift data foundation architecture so odf is available in a two different architectures we can deploy odf on internal mode or we can deploy it on external mode if you identify the name internal external internal means we can deploy a odf within a one open shift cluster we can utilize our worker nodes within a worker node you can add additional volume and those volumes we can make it as a odf cluster that odf one of the odf key component is ceph cluster so using this ceph cluster it will provide your file storage block storage object storage for our pods so it have a csi driver that means container storage interface drivers so similarly when it comes to the external mode instead of using a open shift worker nodes we are configuring a externally the red hat chef cluster so this red hat chef storage cluster we can configure on a physical servers or bare metal servers or we can configure on a virtual environment one example is vmware vsphere platform any way is we can use but for production environment red hat recommends to use bare metal server for testing purpose you can configure odf on virtual machines also only for testing and development purpose and once we configure the red hat self storage cluster it will also have a same feature of file storage block storage and object storage but this storage option external mode benefit is it can be shared to not only one open shift cluster we can be shared to the multiple open shift clusters let's say in our demo environment we have a open shift cluster 1 2 3 for this three clusters if you want to provide a odf access we recommend to configure odf in external mode suppose if you want to configure odf only in internal mode means that internal mode odf configuration dedicated for only one open shift cluster only it cannot be shared to other open shift clusters that is only the high level difference between internal mode and external mode okay now let's quickly log into our lab and i will show you how we can set up odf internal mode in our later session i will show you how we can set up the external mode odf okay so let me log into our lab system let's say within our lab system we have a red hat open shift is running on vsphere platform we have three master node three worker node and let's say i'm connected to the ocp3 cluster 3 ocp if you see the all the vm names master and worker vms starts with ocp3 we given the cluster name as open shift container platform cluster 3 okay and currently we are using the latest version it is a 4.3 version and it is running on vsphere platform and to install the odf in internal mode we have to go to the operator hub and search for a open shift data foundation when you type data foundation you can find the operators see the relevant operator is open shift data foundation so just select the open shift data foundation you can see the open shift data foundation as i mentioned odf have a few key operators it includes rook ceph and nuba nuba operator nuba operator another name is multi cloud gateway or multi cloud object gateway okay and as i mentioned odf have some core capability self managing service hyper converged and it will support for file block and object storage and data can be protected on odf and also elastic storage in your data center and simplified data management these are all the core capabilities of odf and while installation we can just select the default features and click on install and it is using the stable 4.13 now click on install so odf installation may take a while just monitor the screen until the odf installation complete successfully it clearly says the operator is installing it says requirement not met it's trying to install we have to wait until it's complete it clearly saying that storage system required odf open shift data foundation provides a common control plane for storage solutions on open shift container platform once installation is finished we can plan to configure a storage system
Okay, installation is completed. So when you see here, installed operator custom resource required, completed, and it is also clearly saying that web console update is available, refresh web console. Okay, so we can just refresh the console. So the refresh is completed. We are good to create a storage system. So just click on create storage system. See, while creating the storage system, we have an option deployment type, full deployment. When you scroll down, we can see either full deployment we can do or we can do a multi-cloud object gateway. So deploys multi-cloud object gateway without block and file services. So this is dedicatedly for your object gateway. But currently we are deploying data foundation with block, shared file system and object services. Three features we are planning to utilize. Okay. And backing storage type, we have a multiple options like use an existing storage class. We have already existing storage class thin CSI. That means vSphere default feature container storage interface and create new storage class using local storage devices and connect with an external storage system. That means, as I mentioned, ODF can be available on internal mode and external mode. For external mode, we have to use this feature. But currently, we are going with a internal mode. So the first option is relevant option. Okay. And if you want to enable network file system, uh, yellow NFS to yellow, low resources by default, you can enable or leave it blank. Just click on next. When you click on next, it is saying requested capacity is two terabyte and it have a three replicas and the data will be equivalent to six terabyte. Okay. But here, if you drop, select the drop down for small scale 0.5 TAB, and standard is 2 TAB and large scale is 4 TAB. For testing purpose, I'm just using a small scale size. Okay. And when you select this one, it says that select at least three nodes. That means three worker nodes, preferably be in three different zones. And it is recommended to start with at least four CPUs. That means our worker node must have minimally 14 CPU and 34 GB memory for each node. But currently our worker nodes are already running with the 16 CPU and 45 GB memory. That means we have enough CPU, enough memory on each worker node so that we are good to proceed on that but this clearly says that we have to select at least three nodes that means we already have three worker nodes so better to select all the three nodes so when we three nodes are selected the total size is 48 cpus and 137 gb memory but the requirement is only 14 cpu we already meet the requirement okay so whenever we select this option and we are good to click on next and we have an option to encryption, enable data encryption for block and file storage. If you want to enable encryption, we can enable. And if you want to use a default network, this is a software defined network, SDN, or there is a custom network, but currently it is in the tech preview. So instead of going to the uh, custom one, we can go with the default software defined network. Now click on next. So if you see the full backing storage, we are going with the default thin CSI and the storage cluster capacity is 0.5 terabyte. And we have selected the necessary CPU and memory on our worker nodes. And we are going with the network default software defined network SDN. Now click on create storage system. When you click on create storage system, it will start configuring a ODF. When we see the once it is configuration is completed, when you select the under storage section, we can see the feature called data foundation. Earlier, there is no option for data foundation. When we install ODF operator and create a storage system, then only we can find this feature, ODF feature. See, ODF status is green. And the storage also, it's configuring. And to see the full status, go to the operators, installed operators, make sure ODF status should be succeeded state. And also storage system must be in the, currently it is saying available vendor CSV ready. So these conditions also meet. And when we select this data foundation, the console is currently ready. And we can see the topology view also. See the, within a topology view, within our ODF, we have a topology view for our three worker nodes. 
okay ocp3 worker 0 and second worker third worker okay and the configuration of storage system is currently it is showing as 0 t uh, raw capacity 0 bytes but it will start consuming from our existing worker nodes disks okay it may take a while to configure and when select the storage class earlier we have only thin csi default storage class within the vSphere by default container storage interface when we enable a obdf operator and then create a storage system then only we can configure another storage class which is ocs that means open shift container storage cluster ceph rgw rgw uh, and also this is the provisioner is OpenShift Torres Chef Rook bucket. Generally, uh, OpenShift Data Foundation have three operators or three components. Those three components includes Rook, Chef, and we have a Nuba. Nuba, another name, multi cloud, multi cloud object gateway. Okay, these are the three components. That's why wherever we can see these namings are coming by default because these are the components within the ODF. Okay. Hope you understand how we can configure a ODF within our OpenShift cluster within a internal mode. This is an internal mode configuration. It's not an external mode because we, we do not have a separate console. Okay. In our later session, I will show you how we can deploy ODF in external mode. Okay. Hope you understand how to configure ODF in internal mode. And suppose in the production environment, for testing purpose, we are running ODA OpenShift on a vSphere environment. If you need a really huge environment, if you are running a n number of application, Red Hat recommend to use a bare metal servers. That means physical servers. If you see one sample reference architecture, it is completely a bare metal setup within our Red Hat OpenShift container platform. As we are aware, either enterprise Linux or core OS, we are running on three master nodes. That means three master physical servers, which includes HPE DL325 Gen 10 Plus, and worker nodes can be high configuration. If you see here the low configuration 3 to 5, here is the latest configuration DL385 Gen 10 Plus version 2. 385 means generally if it is ends with 5 means AMD motherboard, ends with 0 means Intel processor. That is only the difference, 380 and 385 models, okay? And the persistent volume option, we require Red Hat OpenShift Data Foundation. For Data Foundation, see in the production environment, they used one, two, three, six servers they used. For this three, six servers, they configured Red Hat self storage cluster. That means it is not an internal mode, it's an external mode. This external mode, storage cluster, ODF cluster, can be shared to multiple OpenShift clusters. Okay. In future, if the customer wanted to implement data fabric feature, HP have their own data fabric feature that is HP Esmeral data fabric that is also configured on additional five servers. And to provide overall storage to all the servers, we have a HP storage system that is nimble. This is a high level solution design diagram. Okay, when we're planning to do the ODF setup on bare metal or physical server environment. Okay, but for testing, we did the open shift on vSphere and also we configure ODF on internal mode. In later session, I will show you the how to configure ODF external mode on virtual environment. Because in my lab, I do not have that many physical servers. That's why I will show you the same concept. I will show you on the VM level. Okay, hope you understand the concept. That's it. Thank you. If you're watching this video first time, please do view, like, share, and subscribe to the Gnan Cloud Garage channel. If you are already subscribed, I appreciate all your support. Bye for now.